Hey everybody, welcome to Glenn's Kitchen. Um, actually today it's Glenn's Garage. Um, I'm going to do something different today. Um, I know most of you don't have smokers, but I do, and I'm going to show you uh, how I smoke uh, some meats. I'm going to do some ribs. It's kind of a two-day process because you have to kind of get the rub on the ribs and the marinade and uh, let it sit overnight, and then we'd be ready to smoke tomorrow. But I just want to go over a few things. Uh, this is my fourth smoker here. Um, it's a pellet smoker. My first smoker was a charcoal smoker, and I I think it was back in the late 80s, probably early 90s that I had it, and the thing was impossible. Had to put charcoal in there, light it, and you had to maintain a temperature around 225, and I could never do that, it was a pain. You had a water pan in there. My second smoker was an electric one, and you plugged it in, and uh, you put a piece of uh, soaked hardwood on top of a pan and uh, water in there and let it smoke and it, it eventually broke on me after many years. It was okay. And the third one I had was called a Smoky Joe. It looked like a garbage can and it was great but it was just too small. I couldn't fit a nice uh, size pork roast on there or maybe one, maybe one or two ribs on there. Now this is the new one. It's a pellet smoker which makes it a lot easier. I'll show you. It goes on here, but inside here you have three pretty big racks that I can put things on. If I had a big roast, I could take one of these out. Um, I have a pan in here just to catch the drippings, even though there's one down here. Um, let me get my pellets. For the ribs, we're going to be using two different kinds of pellets here. And the first pellet I have here, and I'm just gonna open these up here, is called the classic pellet. And these are pellets like you would put in a wood-burning stove. And these classic pellets are pecan, hickory, and the skeet blend. Uh, actually, probably not gonna use that. I'm actually gonna, for this one, use uh, cherry wood and these are what the pellets look like i'm dropping them um but along with the pellets i'm also going to add they came out uh with this new flavor and it's a uh, regular charcoal flavor so i'm going to add a little bit of these charcoal to give it that natural flavor uh that you get when you're barbecuing so i'll put that aside so these pellets go into this hopper here, and when you turn it on, there's an auger that kind of feeds the pellets automatically into there and keeps it consistent. So you don't have to worry about changing pellets. You just fill this hopper up. It's kind of no nonsense. Um, again, the pellets drop into here in a little flame and it consists of you got a thermometer out here. And usually for smoking meats, you want to smoke between 225 and 250. You want to go real slow and it takes a long time. The ribs, there's a method called 321 method and it's three hours on the, um, in the racks here. And I'm going to actually do something different this time. I'm going to be hanging the ribs. I heard that's pretty good and I got some hooks that we're going to hang and I'm going to show you how to do that. But you go three hours in here, you take them out, you wrap them in foil with a little bit of uh, mo moisture and I use apples. Uh, juice or apple cider or some people use a blend of water and apple cider vinegar and then you fill them in that foil and you put them in here for another two hours take them out and you're going to rub them down with a little bit of barbecue sauce not much and we're going to go through the whole thing and we're going to put it back in here and let that barbecue sauce get like a nice crust on there so this is the smoker we're going to use uh, we're going to use cherry wood and charcoal and let's get started with the meat so i can get it marinated Okay, now that I showed you the smoker, um, we'll go over a little bit more tomorrow, but I'm going to marinate the meat here. As you can see, I have two racks of ribs. Uh, these are baby backs. Um, baby backs, and there's another kind of called St. Louis uh, spare ribs. Uh, the baby backs are a little bit more meatier, but I think the uh, St. Louis are just a little bit more tastier. Uh, so give and take. You, you know, both are good. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. But what I do is... I'm going to use one hand and I'm going to see if I can pull off this 
tissue here. It's called a uh, silver skin. And you kind of just got to get an edge here and kind of pull it. There it goes. And I don't know if you can see that, but kind of get that edge in there. And paper towel is easier because it just gives you something to hold on to, but just kind of pull that right off. Sometimes it comes off in a whole chunk, but let's see if I can get it here. We're down here. Yeah. Some people leave this on, but most barbecue enthusiasts say take it off. Yeah. I'm gonna grab a knife, hold on a second. Okay. So let's see what I got here now. I just kind of cut into it a little bit with a, and if this doesn't come up, it's no big deal, but uh, usually it's more pre prevalent on the uh, St. Louis style ribs, but you want to keep some of this on there because it is some fat and yeah, I think we're good now. So you can see where I pulled some of this off. Let me just wash my hands real quickly. What I'm going to do is take a paper towel and I'm just going to get the moisture off the ribs because I want the food to stick. Let me get that out of here. Turn it over here. And just like I said, just kind of get that excess moisture out. Best way to do this is with two hands. Uh, one hand is going to work and rubbing the meat, and the other is going to put the uh, stuff on. But I like to use the fat side down first, and I'll tell you why in a second. But what I have here is some yellow mustard, and I'm just going to put that on here a little bit and rub that in. And that's going to kind of be the base so that the spice stick. And mustard goes good with pork. It really does. So I'm just going to rub that in with my left hand. And make sure we get in the sides here. Just make sure we recover the meat. We're gonna do the other side too, so. Okay, I have two rubs here. And my first rub is, oh, let me open this side here, it's better. It is a sweet rib rub. And I'm gonna Sprinkle that on there. Be generous. Yep, right, let me get over here, the corner. There we go. And the next rub I have is called pulled pork rub. Now this is for pulled pork, but it goes good with any kind of uh, pork. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that on there. And then with this hand, I'm just gonna press it into me. I'm not going to rub it. I just want to press it in. Because if you rub it, it kind of rubs it off. So that looks good to me. And like I said, I'm using my left hand. I'm going to turn the meat over. And we do the top. Now this is the part that you want to have the spices on because this is the meaty section. So that's why I did that bottom side first. Once again, I'm going to add a layer of mustard. And we're going to Give that a rub in. Make sure we get the sides and the, everything. Okay, and once again, we're going with the sweet rib rub. And like I said, this one, you wanna be a little more generous with the rub. Perfect. Get a little over here. And then we have the pulled pork rub. And I'm just gonna add not as much of this as the other one. There's another uh, rub out that's called sweet heat if you want a little bit of heat in there. Okay, and let me just wash my hands. here and 
Put you on pause while I get my plastic wrap. Okay, I'm back. Simple saran wrap. And what we're gonna do, is gonna take a piece. And we're just gonna cover these ribs fairly well with them. This way they're gonna sit overnight and all those flavors are gonna kind of uh, get in there. that down and like I said I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator it's kind of this top part's gonna sweat and kind of pull in all those spices into the meat and we'll come back tomorrow morning these will be ready and we'll throw them on the smoker hey everybody welcome to day two of cooking uh, ribs uh, yesterday we marinated the ribs in a little bit of mustard sauce and then I put the spice over it and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight and now we're gonna get started um, just want to show you the basic parts of the smoker here I know I went through it a little bit yesterday but uh, come a long way since my first smoker with charcoal which I had so much problems with regulating the temperature this is so much easier I'm gonna dump wood pellets in here and um, we're gonna just let it go and it's so much nicer the wood pellets are actually like flavored woods like oak maple cherry apple that are compressed into little pellets and uh, I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm gonna show you the how where they go in. Okay, uh, before I put the pellets in, I'm gonna open it up. I took everything out and I'm gonna put it in to show you what I have here. Um, on the very bottom here, and I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna move the camera a little closer. But here is where the pellets fall into and it has a little igniter and the fire is down here and it creates smoke. And um, their smoke will stay in here, and that's what's going to cook the meat over a low temperature. Um, so this here is a fire pan that's going to go over this, and we're going to put that in there now. I'm going to have to take it out later when I light it, but I'm just showing you the setup pretty much. And next here is a drip pan, and this gets hooked in here and sits over here and I don't know if you can see over here but there's a little spout that catches drips and greases and I have a bucket here that I just hang on there and that will catch it but really what I do is I have a pan and it's a terracotta pan the bottom of a pot that I use I just lined it with foil and I'm going to actually put that on my bottom rack here. So here's the rack. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to put on the bottom. And I'm just going to put on the bottom rack so that the meat's directly over this and the drip things will go in here, not fall down here and ruin my smoker. Um, and the top rack we're going to put up here. Now, as I said today, we're going to hang the ribs. So they're going to be hanging from this down to here. And we'll see how that goes. Um, so down here, I don't know if you can see, is a thermometer. It's a set at uh, smoke all the way up to 350 degrees. And it gives you a readout here of what the internal temperature is and also the out temperature. And there's two probes here that you can stick in your meat. One I put in the meat and one I'll just have hanging here just so I can uh, gauge the inside temperature because this really isn't accurate. I, probably to get it up to 225, I need to set it at 250 or maybe even 275 depending on the weather. And there's also a thermometer out here. This is fairly accurate, but what I've been noticing, it's about 25 degrees off. So I want to have a thermometer in here that shows exactly what I'm cooking at. Because I really want to cook at a 225 degree temperature. Um, a quick question for all of you. Do you know the difference between barbecue and grilling and smoking? Well, barbecuing and smoking are pretty much the same thing. Um, when you put a steak or a hamburger over a gas grill or a charcoal grill and heat it real high and get that temperature high, and gr that's grilling. But smoking and barbecuing are slow smoke or sm slow cooked foods usually like 225 degrees to 250 for many hours. Um, again, as I said, these ribs are gonna take about six hours 
It's about 10 o'clock now, so in order to be done around 5 or 6, I need to get them started now. So we're going to use a 3 two, one method, 3 hours, 2 hours, 1 hour, and we'll show you how, how that plays out. Okay, um, I just took the ribs out of the refrigerator and have them sit just about 15 minutes or so. And this is what they look like after sitting there. And real quickly, what I'm going to do is just pat them dry, get that moisture off there. Because moisture will prohibit browning. Moisture is the enemy of browning. And we want these uh, meat to get some nice brown color on them. Get another one here. And all that um, spice that we put in yesterday are soaked in. So I'm just going to give it a quick refresh of the spices. And again, I have my sweet rib rub. And let me put this down a little so you can see more. There we go. Let me open this. And we're just, like I said, just a refresher of the spices. Looks like a lot, but I promise you it's not that, that much. I'm not going to put as much as this one on here as I did the other one. This is the um, pulled pork rub. So it's for pulled pork, but it uh, this must be one stuck in here. There we go. But it's very good on ribs as well. Okay, I think we're good there. Okay, now again, this is the first time I've ever tried hanging ribs. So I bought these uh, hooks and I'm gonna try to hook them up. I'm actually gonna double hook them, but there's bones in here and I wanna kinda go between the bones and let's see how this works out here. Might have to get a knife in here first and get, get under there, but let's see. Okay, hold on one second, get a knife. Okay, if these hooks don't work out, I'll have to put them on. But there we go, we got it in there. So I just made a little indentation with the knife and I'll put the hook in there. I think the way it's, the hooks are bent, it's hard to get in there, but I, there is a hole in there. There we go. So there's one and make sure that's down. How that's hooked. I'm gonna put two in there actually. I'm gonna put one on both sides for each one, just in case. Let me get the knife out here again. Put that. You know, I might have put the wrong side of the hook in there, but let's let's look. Okay, let's go this way here. We're getting there. All right, there we go. Yeah, I think I have the wrong side hook in there. You want the smaller end up and the bigger end down. <laughs> yeah, you'll live and learn. Let me see if I can get that in there. Again, find the hole. There we go. Okay, perfect. So these are going to be hanging like that on the ribs. So I'll do the other one. No need for you to sit there and watch. You do two of them. And we'll be right back. Okay, here's the hopper. I'm gonna put the machine on now and you can see how it works. I don't know if you can see that uh, in there, but the auger is starting to turn. So I'm just gonna fill up with my wood pellets at this time. I got a mixture of, yesterday I said I was using cherry wood, but I also have this mixture of um, fruit wood, it's called apple, cherry, and maple. So I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of charcoal just to get that good charcoal flavor. I'm gonna use more apple or more of the fruit wood than the charcoal wood. Okay, I'm gonna 
gets this all in with the ice. but for five hours I think that's going to be good. I can always add more or I'll leave it out here. But I'm just mixing it in so that the charcoal and apple wood is mixed, mixed in. Uh, so I don't know if you could see that. So that's going to be into the fire down here. I'm just going to remove this pan here. And in a few seconds I'm just going to move the camera over here. Yep. And we can see the fire go in a few seconds here. You can see it's beating pellets in there. You can hear it probably. Usually takes about two to three minutes. Let's let that go for a few seconds. Started. We'll come back and I'll show you, but I don't want to have you sitting here and watching uh, pellets drop into a stove. Okay, as you can see, we got smoke coming out now, and there's a fire in there. So I'm going to close this up in a second, but it's smoking like a freight train. I have two thermometers in here. The first one I have, I put on a half a potato and a probe that's going to go cut in there, that's going to be put in there. And then I have a regular smoker that looks like this that I'm just going to throw on top here when we're finished. But I'm just going to close this up and get this up to heat right now. I want it to be up to 275 degrees, but before I do that, I need to put my pan in here. That's a heat deflector. Right there, and put my sorry drip pan in here, and we're gonna close it up. I'm gonna put the temperature up to like 275, and hope that it reaches 225 degrees. That's 250 right there. Put up to 275. I'm gonna plug this into one of these, and. We'll come back when it's set to 225. Okay, the grill is up to 250 some odd degrees. Uh, probably drop back down. I turned the temperature down a little bit. So I'm gonna get the meat in here. And
closer here too. And we're going to close the door and let this go. Like I said, we're going to go for three hours. And every half hour to hour, I'm going to spray it down with uh, some cider vinegar or I have apple cider at home, so I'm going to use that. And when an hour comes, I'll show you what to do. Okay, the grill is up to 250 some odd degrees. Uh, probably drop back down. I turned the temperature down a little bit. So I'm going to get the meat in here. And hours and every half hour to hour I'm going to spray it down with uh, some cider vinegar or I have apple cider at home so I'm going to use that and when an hour comes I'll show you what to do okay uh, it's been about an hour now and I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna spray it down I have a can of spritz here. It's apple cider. As I said, you can use any kind of liquid. Um, I like apple cider on it. But you can use regular apple juice. You can use cherry juice, um, anything you really want. Uh, a lot of people use cider vinegar, one third to one part uh, water, one third cider vinegar to one part water. And uh, again, I'm just gonna open this up and spritz it down at this point. And you can see it in there, it looks great. Let's see both ribs there. Let's get the camera over here. There we go. And we're just gonna stick it in there. We're gonna split these. What this is gonna do is not only gonna keep the meat moist, but it's also going to give it a little sugary coating. And I have two little pieces on top that I've trimmed. And you can see my temperature's at 225 up there. That's perfect. So that looks good. I'm gonna close it up, and in another hour I'm gonna come back and we're gonna spritz it again. Okay, we're back out. It's another hour. I'm going to add some of the pellets to the um, hopper again. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's not running low, but sometimes it kind of gets a, I'm going to bring this a little closer, gets a little cave in there and you kind of got to fill it in. And so I'm just going to put some more in there. So let's get back down. side and we'll once again spritz down the meat. Let me open that up real quick. You want to work as quickly as possible here with the meat. And um this over here and we'll pull that up. How does that look? And we're just gonna come in here and spritz it down again. Temperature is around 235 closer to 250 maybe 245. And we're just gonna like I said moisten this meat up here. Got these little two pieces on top I want to get. And we'll shut it back down. And another hour we'll come back out. 